O you who have believed, if there comes to you a disobedient one with information, investigate lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become, over what you have done, regretful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamudilla lah. Wa man yudlil falahadiyya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasoolu amma ba'id. This lecture is a translation <coughs> of the original lecture given in Urdu by Dr. Murtada Baksh, Hafizahullah. For those who want to listen to the original Urdu lecture, they can go to the link provided in the description and listen from there. <coughs> this lecture is about Jarh wa Ta'adil, meaning the signs of criticizing and praising. The question that is their jarh wa ta'adil in this time of ours? And who is the leader of jarh wa ta'adil in this time? This is a question which is very famous and this is a topic that is being very, uh, that is being discussed a lot in this time of ours. It has become very contemporary. So we will see inshallah the reality of this issue. The misconception it happened because of two questions being posed to the scholars of Al Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. The first question was posed to Sheikh Saleh Al Fadan Hafizahullah. He was asked, Is this a time, the time of Jarh wa Ta'adil? He replied, meaning Sheikh Saleh Al Fadan Hafizahullah replied, Jarh wa Ta'adil was during the time of Riwayah, meaning during the time of narrations. And there is no need in this time of ours. And he was asked if he knows someone who is a leader of the Jarh wa Ta'adil. So he replied, he does not know of anyone. This was the first question posed to, say, to Shaykh Salih al-Fadhan, Hafizahullah. The second question was asked to Shaykh Abdullah al-Gudayan, Rahmatullahi alayhi. Is it correct that in this time of ours, there are scholars of Jarh, so he replied, no, it was only during the time of narrations. The Jarh wa Ta'adil is in the books and it is enough and there is no scholar of Jarh wa Ta'adil in this time of ours. <coughs> he was asked, is it correct that the leader of Jarh wa Ta'adil is Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhili? So the Shaykh replied, Rahmatullahi alayhi, No, if I were to meet him on the street, I would not even recognize him. These two questions are being spread on YouTube and other places electronically on the internet. So in this lecture, we will clarify these two questions. Our lecture will contain six points. Point number one. Jarh wa Ta'adil was not limited to the time of narrations, but rather it was ongoing in the later times. Criticism was done for the people other than the chain of narrators, meaning other than the Ravi, the one who narrated the Hadith. Point number two, Shaykh Saleh al fudan Hafizahullah limited Jarh wa Ta'adil until the time of narrations, but he, did he ever do Jarh on someone himself or not? And if he has done jarh on someone, then why he is saying that jarh wa ta'adil is not in this time of ours and it was limited during the time of narrations. Point number three is that Sheikh Abdullah al-Gudayan, rahmatullahi alayhi, he also limited jarh wa ta'adil to the time of narrations. But did he also ever do jarh on someone? Point number four, did Abdullah al-Gudayan Rahmatullahi alayhi, no Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, Hafizullah or not? 
because he's saying in the question if i were to meet him i would not recognize him point number five who is the leader of jarh wa ta'adil in this time of ours and point number six summary and conclusion so the main <coughs> focus of this lecture will be to clarify is there jarh wa ta'adil or not and to clarify the two questions the first question that was asked to Sheikh Saleh Al-Fadhan and the second question that was asked to Sheikh Abdullah Al-Ghudayan now again the reason that why do people they discuss about this and why do the people they argue about this is because they want to prove that Sheikh Rabi' and his manhaj is incorrect he criticizes everyone. He criticizes the innocent. He criticizes the innocent people. This is his habit. He does not care about anyone. He just only knows how to criticize. Now, Sheikh Rabir bin Hadi al Madkhali, Hafizahullah, may Allah make him steadfast on the path of the Salaf. Amin. And may Allah also make us steadfast on the path of the Salaf. Inshallah. Amin. He has many enemies. This is clear. There is no doubt about it. But there are also many, Alhamdulillah, who agree with Shaykh Rabi'ah. And those who agree with Shaykh Rabi'ah, Ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, Hafizullah, are the kibar al-ulama, senior scholars. And those who disagree with him, <coughs> people don't even know them. They're not even mentioned with honor and respect. Subhanallah. Now, let me make it very clear. We are not claiming that Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Mathkari is ma'asoom, he's innocent. No. But rather, the point is, is this manhaj or is Shaykh Rabi' doing a mistake, doing an error here or not? When he does jarh or ta'adil of someone. So let us continue inshallah with we ask the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us say that which is the haqq. Ameen. So the point number one is, is there jarh wa ta'adil in this time of ours? I will quote five different ulama of different times and we will see from there that what do the ulama say. The five ulama that I will quote, number one, Imam Nawawi, rahmatullahi alayhi, who died in the year 676 Hijri. Number two, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, who died in the year 728 Hijri. Al-Hafid al-Zahabi, rahmatullahi alayhi, who died in the year 748 Hijri. Number four, Ibn Abil Iz al-Hanafi, rahmatullahi alayhi, who died in the year 792 Hijri. And number five, Ibn Rajab al-Hambali, who died in the year 795 Hijri. Imam Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi says in Riyad al-Salihin, Bab al-Ghaybah. He says those places where backbiting is permissible are criticizing majruheen, those who have faults in them. Where they are, meaning who are the majruheen? They are the narrators, the witnesses or the writers, the authors of any book. They will be criticized and ذلك جائز بالإجماع and this is permissible with ijma' when consensus of the ulama but rather it is obligatory to protect the sharia in order to protect the sharia of islam how are we going to no this is not his quotation how are we going to protect the, sh the sharia if anybody comes and or let, let's say if we let anybody come and say anything he likes whether it is right or wrong and no one advises him no one clarifies the truth, no one refutes the batil, the falsehood, then how are we going to, to protect the sharia? People will not be able to distinguish what is right and what is wrong. If there is no one to advise them or if there is no one to make clear to them, this is the true path and this is the wrong path. It will not be possible to protect the sharia if you do not do this. So we have to advise him and we have to clarify the haqq from the batil. Then uh, Imam Nawabi rahmatullah says further, if you see any faqih coming and going to a fasiq, an evildoer, or to a mubtadi' to an innovator, to learn from him, and if you fear it will bring harm upon the people, then advise him. 
advise him that you can get affected by them. And the nasiha, the advice should be sincere. It should be done with ikhlas. It should not be done to belittle him. Rather, it should be done that we worry about him, we care about him, and that we are worried about, about his religion and his hereafter. In the Sharh of Sahih Muslim, Imam Nawawi Rahmatullah says, Ilam, <coughs> know that criticizing the narrators is obligatory with consensus, with ijma, because it is needed to protect the Sharia. And this backbiting is not muharrama, it is not that which is sinful. Rather, it is our advice, or uh, rather, it is an advice for Allah and his messenger and it has not stopped it is still ongoing being done by respected scholars they are the best the pious now what is imam nawabi rahmatullah saying over here is it finished he's saying it is not it, it has not stopped it is ongoing now was the time of imam nawabi rahmatullah rahmatullah alayh was his time the time of riwayah was his time the time of narrations are the hadith not already recorded? Are the ravi, are the narrators not al already known in the books? So look what he's saying. Second, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayh. <coughs> Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayh says in Majmu' al-Fatawa, volume number 28, page number 231 and 232. He says, and the people of innovation who go against the book and the sunnah and whether they oppose with their words or actions with regards to worships then to clarify the situation to the ummah is obligatory with consensus then Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi mentions the question that was asked to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi was asked that there are two people which of them are more beloved to you one person he prays tahajjud he prays the night prayer he does nawafil fasts and he does sadaqa and he does the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kathir very much and there is a second person who refutes the innovators and clarifies the haq that clarifies the truth to the people which one of these two are more beloved to you or which one of these two uh, are doing the better action Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi says the one who is fasting the one who is praying the one who is giving sadaqah the one who is doing dhikr he is only benefiting himself but the one who is refuting the innovators the one who is clarifying the sunnah the one who is clarifying reviving Islam he is benefiting the whole ummah he is more beloved to me subhanallah and then shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi after mentioning this story he says its benefit is general for the whole of the muslims meaning refuting the ahlul bid'ah refuting the innovators and it is a kind of jihad of sabilillah he then says further and to inform the people from innovation is important even while there comes a need that we mention them by specifying the names even if this innovation is not taken from someone who is a hypocrite but they thought meaning the one who are doing this innovation they thought that this action is khair and guidance but reality was against it still it is obligatory to mention this innovation and this is why it is obligatory that every person's situation be mentioned who make mistake in hadith or narrating the hadith or the one who makes mistake in his opinion or verdict or the one who make mistake in his zuhud or worship even though he is a mushtahid so that the people will be aware from it Allah Subhanallah look at the categories look at the categories that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi mentions number one the one who makes mistake in hadith, number two, in narrating the hadith, number three, who make mistakes in his opinion or verdict, his fatwa, number four, the one who may make mistake in his zuhd or worship, in his ascetism and worship. Even though he's a mujtahid, still we, have, we will have to clarify. Why? Because the one who will follow him, he will not be a mujtahid. He will follow him and he will go into errors. So the followers should be 
warned or should be told about the truth. And this is not my own thing. This is by Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi. Number three, Imam Al-Hafidh Al-Dhahbi, rahmatullahi alayhi, says in Lisan Al-Mizan, Jil number, uh, volume number two, page number 450, he says, Ratan wa ma ratan. Dajjalu min, min al-dajjajila. Then Ratan, who is Ratan? He is a liar from the liars. Dajjal is the biggest liar. So he said he's a liar from the biggest liars. Why? He claimed to be a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 600 years after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This person Ratan Al-Hindi, he was born, he came after 600 years after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, I am, I am a companion, I'm a Sahabi. Now is this Jarah or not? Is this Jarah? Is Imam Dhahabi criticizing someone? If yes. He is criticizing Ratan. Is Ratan a narrator? Is he a Ravi? No, he's not. So he's making Jarah. Imam Dhahabi, Rahmatullah alayhi, himself is making Jarah on someone. Number four. Ibn Abil Aiz al Hanafi, Rahmatullah alayhi, he says in Sharh Aqida Tahabiya, page number 629, the Urdu version, not the Arabic or the English, the Urdu version, he says. Remember, Ibn Arabi and the people with the same ideology are hypocrites, they are atheists, they are ittihadiyya and they will be in the lowest section of the hellfire. Ittihadiyya are those people who say that God and the creation is one. Meaning, this is the aqidah of the hululiyya who say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the creation. He's, he is a part of the creation. He is inside the creation. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. So is Ibn Abil Aid al-Hanafi rahmatullahi alayhi, is he doing jarah? Is this jarah or not? He's making jarah on Ibn Arabi and the people who have the same ideology. He is also making jarah. And his time was not the time of narrations. His time was not the time of riwayah. Number five, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali <coughs> rahmatullahi alayhi. He says in his book, Al-Farq, Bayna Nasiha, وَالتَّعِيِّرِ He says, and there is no difference between criticizing any narrator of hadith and between whose narration is to be accepted and between someone who erred, who made an error in understanding Quran and the Sunnah and he made this mistake due to his ta'wil and he clings to it. وَتَمَسَّكَ بِهِ Now look, what is Ibn Rajab Al-Hambali Rahmatullah saying? Even after we clarify something we clarify the truth to someone still he sticks to it because he says what a bihi that he clings to it so we clarify to him still he does not listen then we have to clarify the haq we have to criticize him we have to make it known to the people otherwise the people the laymen will follow him and they will also follow in the falsehood why is this important he says further Ibn Raja al-Hamri al says, so that the people are warned from obeying or following him from that in which he erred. And then he says, وَقَدْ أَجْمَعَ عُلَمَا عَلَى جَوَازِ ذَلِكَ عَيْضًا And there is ijma' of the ulama on the permissibility of this action. Now was his time the time of narrations? Ibn Raja al-Hamri, Rahmatullah, 795 Hijri. Was that the time of narrations? No. Then he says further, <coughs> Ibn, Rajal, uh, Ibn Rajab al hanbali he says, and some of the Imams refuted the weak statements and rejected the weak statements of other Imams excessively. Just like Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal alayhi, refuted the writing of Imam Abi Thor alayhi, and other than him that which were weak and incorrect and he used to exaggerate in doing this meaning refuting the weak and the incorrect statements of the other uh, scholars of other imams imam ahmed ibn hanbal rahmatullah used to exaggerate in doing this in which they the mistakers alone were famous and the people of innovation and those who resemble the scholars but in reality they are not scholars so it is permissible to make clear their ignorance and show that and, and and to show their defects so that the people will be aware and the people will not follow them. These are the five 
scholars and I've quoted from their books and from their teachings that what do they say about criticizing, about doing jarah on someone? Because this is the only way, I khuan, oh my brothers, that the sharia will be protected. Otherwise, ilm is going. There are not many people who are learning. And if you mix the haq with the batil, the truth with the falsehood, how will the layman distinguish what is right and what is wrong? Point number two, which was that Shaykh Saleh Al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah, he limited jarh wa ta'adil during the time of narrations. But did he ever do jarh on someone? The answer is yes. Not only on the people, but rather he did jarh on groups. One questioner asked Shaykh Saleh Al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah, Ya Shaykh, what is the ruling on that some people follow the mistakes of some da'is, of some du'at, of some callers, and collect them and make it common by recording in a cassette? So the question is that there are some people, okay, they follow some other du'ats, they, they follow their mistakes, they record them, they gather them in a cassette, and they make it common among the people so that the people will be aware of those mistakes. Sheikh Saleh al fadhan Hafizahullah said, if by this action they intend to make clear the truth and to show the and, uh, and to show the falsehood, so this is a very good thing and this is from calling towards Allah. And it is important to inform the people so that they will be aware of these mistakes and they will not commit them themselves. But if they intend to criticize a person because of his personality, then this is not permissible. And this clip is also available on YouTube. It is very strange that the people who upload the fatwa, the verdict of uh, Sheikh Saleh al fadhan Hafizahullah, that there is no jarh wa ta'adil in this time, they forget about this verdict. And they do not upload this verdict. This is not justice. This is not adal. Another question, which is available on YouTube also. I asked one question to a sheikh, that what is the ruling on some TV programs like Taat Mat... Uh, Tash Matash and others. So he replied, meaning uh, th this is a questioner. Until now, this is a questioner. The questioner is saying that the one whom he asked the question, the Sheikh, he replied, there is nothing wrong in watching them. They do a good reflection of our environment and tell our mistakes in a different way. So the Sheikh Salil Fawzan Hafizullah asked, who said this? Who gave this fatwa? The questioner said, Abdullah Mutlaq said this. The Sheikh said, you did not find any better person than him. Don't listen to him because he is from the Ikhwan al Muslimin. Is this jarah or not? Is this jarah on a person, on a personality or not? And, and Sheikh Salih al Fazan, Hafizullah, is he in our time? Or was he 300, year, 300 or 1400 years ago? No, he is in our time. He is a scholar of this time. And he is doing jarah on someone. Sheikh Saleh Hazan Hafizullah also says in his book, Al Ajwib Al Mufida, page number 146. There's a question over there mentioned. What is the manhaj of Al-Sunnah Wal Jama'ah in criticizing someone and mentioning their name? And is mentioning mistakes of some scholars fitna which we should stop? The Sheikh replies, Hafizullah, the mistakes should, should be mentioned. What is a mistake and what is the truth should be clarified. But mentioning the names has no benefit. It can have problems. Then he says further, if you feel the need that the one being refuted, his name should be mentioned so that the people will know him. So this is correct for the better benefit. So the ulama will weigh where is, uh, where is more benefit. Meaning, is there more benefit in mentioning his name or is there more benefit it in not mentioning the name but rather just giving the general ruling that this is not permissible whoever does this is doing wrong then he says further because muhaddithin used to mention the name of the majruheen those with the faults their purpose was not that that person is bad personally but rather their intent was to make clear the truth 
so that it will be known that his narrations have faults so that the people will stay away from him and the people will become aware so action is based upon intention if his intention is only to belittle someone's personality then this is not permissible Sheikh Saleh Al-Fazan was asked by Sayyid Qutb a statement was presented in front of Sheikh Saleh Al-Fazan of Sayyid Qutb the Sayyid Qutb said slavery in Islam is very limited its, its, uh, its purpose was to exchange Muslim slaves in return and uh, there's a long discussion on this so this is just the summary that this is the purpose of slavery in Islam that Sayyid Qutb he said so the Sheikh replied this statement is false and by this statement there is fear of, kuf, uh, of kufr upon the individual except that he says this out of ignorance or he says because of blind following then he has some other some excuse and ignorance is a great calamity Sheikh Salih al-Fadal also did jarh on Akhwala Muslimin and Jama'at al-Tabliq as a group you can read uh, much more detail in his book that that I uh, that I just mentioned, Al Ajbi Bal Mufida. You can read uh, <coughs> where Sheikh Salih Fazan, Hafidahullah, has criticized the groups and even in individuals. Now the question arises here: <coughs> Sheikh Salih Fazan, Hafidahullah, he is doing jarah on people and groups now why did he say that there is no jarh wa ta'adid in our times the answer you know this question it was asked for him in different ways in Masjid Malik Saud in Jeddah in this year in the year 2011 I think it was before Ramadan my teacher Dr. Murtada Baksh Hafizahullah he was there he attended those lectures and he said he recorded those lectures and he said that this question was asked him for three consecutive days the question was some Salafi scholars keep saying bad or keep speaking ill about each other so what should we a student of knowledge do so the answer was of the Sheikh he said support the one with the haq with the truth and leave the one with the falsehood simple answer first three first three days same question same answer now the question changed the fourth day on the fourth day the questioner said ya sheikh there are some student of knowledge among us and they bring the statements of scholars slandering each other and because of this fitna some people have become apostates so what should we do now look at the question that there are some people who are bringing statements of scholars slandering each other and because of this fitna some people are becoming apostates they are leaving Islam any scholar not, not only Sheikh Salih al fazan Hafizahullah if any scholar was there in this situation he would say the same thing do not do Jarh wa Ta'adil if because of this the Tulab al-Ilm the Salafi are becoming apostates then it is becoming fitna stop it so, so, so Sheikh replied there is no Jarh wa Ta'adil in these times and the people pinpointing others is wrong because this is not the time of Jarh wa Ta'adil so this was because of the nature of the question number two the answer to this question that why did Sheikh Salah Al-Fazan Hafizullah said that there is no Jarh wa Ta'adil this was the first answer the answer number two some scholars they do not use the word Jarh but rather they use the word Naqad or Rad meaning refutation the manhaj is the same that if someone does something wrong and after advising him he does not listen so it should be made manifest meaning his mistakes so that the people will not follow him in those mistakes otherwise how will the Sharia be protected so there are some scholars who do not use the word Jarh but Adil rather they use the words Naqad or Rad but it is the same thing because the Manhaj is the same to refute the one who make mistakes and they saying that there is no leader of Jarh 
wa ta'dil in the Islam of ours it is okay why Shaykh Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam why because he does not consider refuting someone as jarh so of course when there is no jarh wa ta'dil according to him meaning he is limiting the uh, the meaning of jarh only to the time of narrations so of course there is no need for it now but in reality Shaykh Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hafizahullah is doing jarh meaning jarh or naqad they they just use the word naqad or rad instead of uh, jarah now point number three was did abdullah al-ghudayan shaykh abdullah al-ghudayan rahmatullahi did he did he do jarah on someone or not he was asked a question that what do you say about jama'atul tabliq should i go out with them he said la tamshi ma'a jama'atul tabliq don't go out with them don't go with them but rather go with the quran and the sunnah in the same question in the end of the question it's a long answer in the same answer he says uh, he mentioned he mentions Jama'atul Tabliq and Ikhwal Muslimin and then he quotes the hadith of the 73 sects. He is including Jama'atul Tabliq and Ikhwal Muslimin among the 73 sects. Allahu Akbar. Is this Jarah or not? Is this doing Jarah on a group or not? Yes, it is. Point number four. Did Shaykh Abdullah Al Gudayan? Rahmatullah alayh. Did he know about Shaykh Rabi'i? Number one, the answer. It is possible that at that time, when he was asked this question, he did he did not know about Shaykh Rabi'i. It is possible. Number two, is it necessary that every scholar should know all other scholars by their name or face? Number three, if Shaykh Gudayan don't know about Shaykh Rabi'i Hafizahullah does it affect the honor of Shaykh Rabi'i? No it does not. Number four are only the famous scholars on the truth? Is it really necessary that only those ulama only those scholars who are famous they are on the truth? No it is not necessary. Number five if Abdullah Gudayan don't know about Shaykh Rabi'i are there not other Salafi scholars who know about Shaykh Rabi'i? Hafizahullah. Allahu Akbar. You know there is a book, Kitab Rad Ala Haddadiyya by Abdullah Al Ahmari, in page number 41 and 42. He wrote one incident. He said, I was there. I was in front of Shaykh bin Baz. Rahmatullahi alayh. Shaykh bin Baz rahmatullahi was told that Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi al Matkali hafizahullah he speaks ill about so and so. He speaks bad about so and so person. Shaykh bin Baz rahmatullah said, Ya Rajul, ittaqillah, huwa imam al sunnah. That, oh man, fear Allah. He is the leader of the sunnah. He is the imam of Hal sunnah wa jama'ah. Fear Allah. Don't speak about Shaykh Rabi' bin Hadi al Matkali hafizahullah in this manner. And there is also a cassette, a cassette that some of the students of knowledge, may Allah reward them, they gathered all the quotations by the voices of, by the original voices, meaning Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Albani, Shaykh uh, Ibn Uthameen and, and Shaykh bin Baz and all the other scholars who has praised Shaykh Rabi', their own voices are recorded and gathered in one cassette by the name Fana Al-Ulama Ala Shaykh Rabi'. Listen to that cassette if you want. Point number six. Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Matkhali met with Kibar al-Ulama. And there is a book by the name Liqa al-Shaykh Rabi' ma'a Hayati Kibar al-Ulama al-Taif. In that meeting, Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Matkhali he presented his manhaj and none of them disagreed with him. Kibar al-Ulama. This was in 14th. <coughs> 14th of Rajab 1447 meaning 5 years ago from now 
Sheikh Rabi bin Hadil al Madkhali Hafizullah presented his manhaj that this is my manhaj and none of the kibar al ulama disagreed with him, Ya Ikhwan. None of them. Point number seven. Sheikh Abdullah al Gudayan uh, was asked, he was called, somebody called him in the year 1428 Hijri, and he was asked about Sheikh Rabi'ah. The questioner said, We hear that you disagree with Sheikh Rabi' and you speak bad about Sheikh Rabi'. He said, I never disagreed with him, nor I said anything bad about him. So it is very, very possible that Sheikh Abdullah Al Gudayan in the first question, when he was asked about Sheikh Rabi', he said, I don't even know him. But later on, when he knew Sheikh Rabi', he respected him, he honored him, and he agreed with his manhaj. Point number five, who is the leader of Jarh wa Ta'adil of this time? Let us see the answer of Al-Imam, Al-Muhaddif, Al-Illama, Shaykh Nasir, Al-Albani, Rahmatullah Alayh. He was asked about Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadil Al-Madkhali. He gave a long answer. In the end he said, وَبِلْ إِخْتَصَارِ and with summary or with the uh, in brief I aqul I say in hamila ra'iyata jarh wa ta'adil al-yawm fi al-asr al-hadir wa bi haq akhuna ad-daktur rabi' Allahu akbar the one who is a flag bearer <laughs> Allahu akbar of jarh wa ta'adil al-yawm this day fi al-asr in this time of hour Al Hadir, the present time, wa bi haq, and with the truth, akhuna Dr. Rabi' our brother, our brother, al Dr. Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi al Madkhali, hafizahullah. And he says further, whoever refutes him, refutes him without knowledge, and knowledge is with Sheikh Rabi' Subhanallah. Was this statement of Sheikh Albani, rahmatullah alayhi, presented to Sheikh Saleh? Al Fozan was this statement presented to Sheikh Abdullah Al Gudayan? Wallahi, if this statement was presented to them, they would not have answered the way they answered. Wallahi, Sheikh Abdullah Al Gudayan, if he knew Sheikh Al Bani, Rahmatullah spoke like this about Sheikh Rabi, he would never say that Sheikh Rabi, I don't even know him. Sheikh Saleh Fozan would never say like that. There is no Imam of Jarhat Adil in this time. Now point number six, conclusion and summary. We conclude this lecture with four points. Number one, both Sheikh Saleh al fawzan and Sheikh Abdullah al qudayan Hafizullah, they do Jarh, but with a different name, by, by the name of Naqad and Rad. Number two, maybe Abdullah al qudayan Rahmatullah alayhi, did not know about Sheikh Rabi' before, but when he knew about him, he supported and agreed with him. Point number three, Jarh wa Ta'adil was not limited until the time of narrations. It will remain until the day of, of judgment. And point number four, our scholar, our brother, Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Madkhali, Hafizahullah, is the leader of Jarh wa Ta'adil of this time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me, make you, make all the Muslims around the world follow, follow the true Salafi Manhaj, understand the true Salafi Aqeedah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us accept our mistakes, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow the path of the Salafi Salihin. Ameen. Subhanaka Allah bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruku, astaghfiruka ba atubu ilayk. Wa qul jaa al-haq wa zaqa al-baatil, and say, Truth has come, and falsehood has departed. Indeed is falsehood, by nature, ever bound to depart.